Hello friends, welcome back to DIY Guitar Making here in my shop in Burnville, Pennsylvania. We are working on guitar number 86 once again. Here I'll let you take a look at that. Um, I've got this top protector on here, that's why it's so nice and glossy. And uh, we are getting really close to being ready to apply a finish. That's super cool, super exciting, because I really want to string this up and actually hear what this sounds like and feel what it feels like, it being such a smaller body and the neck being a 13 frets to the body neck, there's definitely going to be a different sort of playing feel to the whole instrument. Anyway, we're getting really close to that point. I'll tell you what I did yesterday. I did a lot of work on the bridge, shaping the saddle, crowning the saddle so that the intonation point peaks right down the middle. I reamed out the bridge pin holes so each bridge pin sits at the correct height. I put in my ramps for the string slots and I shaped, rough shaped the saddle here. So I fit it into its slot and gave it its rough shape. So we are ready to add strings, but first I need to do some work on the headstock here, installing the Steinberger tuners. I've talked about these so much in this parlor series and in other videos that I'm not gonna get into what these are here, but suffice it to say that right now I am countersinking the tuners into the headstock. That's not something that you have to do with Steinberger gearless tuners. It's just something that I like to do because it gives it a really clean, slick look when those tuner heads are countersunk down below the surface. It's kind of cool. Also, it does change the effective angle, break angle of the string over the nut. It actually steepens that a little bit. I don't know if that is necessary or has any effect on tone because I think with my 15 degree headstock angle, I've kind of maxed out the angle as far as getting the benefits of good anchoring at the nut. But who knows, maybe I haven't maxed out that angle. Maybe adding just a little bit more actually does help. And countersinking the tuners, by the way, adds more break angle without changing your scarf joint and thus weakening it, right? So I, I do think there's something to that, possibly. I'm gonna explore that a little bit more, but at the very least, it looks cool, so I'm gonna keep doing it. So I'll be using this to make my counterbore, and uh, this is a tool, I think it's called a counterboring bit set. I'll display some more information about it on the screen for you guys, because I can't quite remember where I got this from. All I'm doing here, you can see I kind of started on these two, is I'm placing this in here, and turning it, I am scared to death of the Wangi because it is very uh, splintery. It really wants to tear out. But I do have a little trick for that. When I'm starting the hole, that's when it's scariest because I can really uh, get some tear out across the surface that way. But if I ream this in reverse at first, it kind of scores the top surface. And I just have to do several turns like that. You can see that starting to score. So I'm turning it backwards. Once I have enough of a score there, I can then ream in the forward direction and um, I'm less likely to have any problems. This is actually designed not for this job. This is designed to be held in a drill press you can kind of tell the way the spindle is here. But I have found that I, I really like to use this as a handheld tool. Comes in a set that looks something like this. You've got your various cutters here of different sizes and your various pilots of different sizes so that you can match your tuner hole and then use the cutter, pick the correct cutter size to match your tuner bushing or the tuner head or whatever you're countersinking. So those are the reverse direction cuts right there. Uh, I think I've done that enough. Now I can dig this out. Let's 
So every once in a while I read about some new technique or just a new feature that some other builder is incorporating into their guitars. And honestly, sometimes I wish I hadn't <laughs> uh, read about it because I read about it and I'm like, oh man, I gotta try that on my guitars. And really I know that it's something that's going to just add, it's gonna be one more extra step and I'm not gonna be able to help myself and I'm always gonna to wanna to do it. And that's kinda of what this counter boring thing is becoming. It's far from a necessary thing to do. Almost no one does it. But once I tried it a couple times, I kind of became hooked. It adds a good bit of time to the total build. And if I'm being honest, it doesn't add that much, but it does add something. But that's why we do this. All right, just so you can see a little bit of what I'm doing here. This one is still sitting a little bit proud. I actually went a little bit extra this time around on the countersinking. I wanted to get them damn near flush with that surface, but I think leaving just a, a tiny bit above the surface, I don't know, feels right to me. But this is actually the lowest I've ever countersunk them in there. I have a nice beefy thick head plate to accommodate that sort of thing. So I'm gonna lower that a little bit more and then this will be all done. And there she is. I think this is just going to be a relatively short video today. Just wanted to show you guys that countersinking process. Yeah, I was just showing you right up in this corner. Uh, I actually did have a little tiny piece of tear out that I have to deal with. Not a big deal. And actually, because the pores are so big here, I think I'll be able to hide that using the those large pores uh, pretty easily. Anyway... Just wanted to share some of that with you guys. I've got a lot more to do on this guitar, but I'm gonna do that in another video. We're gonna string it up. We're actually gonna play it once I get the nut slotted. And after that, we're gonna kinda go over the whole instrument. I have some gaps to fill around the binding. I have some little dents to steam out. The usual kind of nitpicky stuff right before I get to the finishing room. And then we're done. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in again, guys, and see you in the next one. Bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.